I'm going to paint this tranquil river scene called Errol Bay from a reference photo I took on Christmas Day. I'll start off with a very light sketch. It's just blocking out the basic shapes and some positioning lines to know where things go, like the horizon lines, where I want the trees to be placed, and uh, the foreground and mid-ground trees. Not much sketching skills involved there. Really just a few guiding lines to help me with my final painting. Especially with trees, I like to at least indicate the lines where I want the trees to go because when I get to painting them with a brush I sometimes um, go into a panic mode and then make really awkward tree trunks. So having a few pencil lines to help me guide that, more so putting in where I want the clouds to go just so that I remember when it comes to painting. First I wet the paper with some clean water so that I can add my sky wash to it. I use cerulean, lavender and a bit of quinacridone rose to start off with. It's a fairly overcast morning sky so I want to add that lavender just to give it a little bit of that soft grey tone. Um, I'm also going to add a bit of raw sienna around the horizon line. I don't want any pure white clouds really, so this gives me a little bit of warmth in that horizon line. And whatever I do in the sky, I'm going to mirror below on the water. The lake is pretty flat, so there is pretty much pure reflections of the sky. I'm going to add a bit of cobalt and I'm continuously adding more and more pigment to build up my clouds. When we paint wet in wet and we start with clear water, uh, the paint will dry really light. So it's important to continuously build up the tone in that first wash so that we don't end up with too weak of a color. Um, that just means more work in the second and third wash. So I'm adding more ultramarine now to this blue and it doesn't really matter which blues you're using, use the ones that you're familiar with, the ones that you like, this is just my personal taste. I've also got a bit of a neutral grey there at the top in my palette that I've been adding to it. And now I've added some burnt sienna to my mix that's already in the palette. I'm going to block out some of that foreground, add a bit of quinacridone, gold and ultramarine for a nice muted green. That's just a patch of um, the foreshore there that's down the corner that will um, be the base for my trees. And then I'm going to block out the mid ground trees as well. I'm going to go over all of this again in my next wash when I put in the mid values. But before it's completely dry, I'm going to build up that foreground tone a little bit. I want that to be a little bit stronger um, from that first wash. That gives me um, a bit more room to play with my mid value where I can just strengthen a few tones here and there but let that first wash come through as you'll see in a minute. So I'm just going to drop in a few blobs here and there and then add a bit of my Indian yellow to get a little bit more of a vibrant saturated green colors are always more saturated in the foreground than they are in the distance. That helps us read the depth of a picture. More grays and faint colors uh, towards the back of the painting. In saying that, I'm also going to add a little bit of more color in that mid-ground. I've now let the painting completely dry and now I'm mixing a similar color to what I have in my darker clouds at the top. A gray it's not entirely mid value i'd say on a scale from one being the lightest and 10 being the darkest that would probably be about a four and then i'm just going to paint in that tree line there in the distance i'm using a chinese calligraphy brush um, you can obviously use whatever brush you like but i do like uh, those brushes because they come to a really fine point Great for detail work, but equally I can get a little bit of texture in there as well. 
because I can shape the bristles in any way I want. And you can see there's a bit of dry brush happening there, which is beautiful. And I'm carefully just uh, painting in that distant line. I'm only making sure that the bottom of it is a fairly straight line, otherwise that um, won't work quite as well. Horizon lines should always be, you know, um, straight and perpendicular to the edge of the paper, otherwise it will feel a bit weird. I'm now going to touch the bottom of that with some clean water which means that the pigments will slowly, slowly run down. I've got my sketchbook at a very slight angle. I've just propped something underneath there so that the paint can run down a bit. And then I'm just going to drop in a bit more pigment just to get those reflections happening. doesn't have to be precisely a mirror of what's above. It's just give the illusion of ref tree reflections and I'm gonna add a bit more clean water just to keep the paint running a little bit further down the page and making sure that my tops of the reflections are soft soft edges and then I've just added a little bit stronger pigment just on the horizon where the reflections meet the trees there's shadows underneath those trees And I'm going to continue that into the mid-ground trees. I've also lifted out my foreground tree trunks that will be in front of those background trees. I just wanted to make sure that I've got some highlights there that I can use later on. And with a stronger green, I'm now painting those mid-ground trees. And my mix is quite dry, it's not a lot of water in there, so that I can get a bit of a dry brush effect. Uh, that gives me those nice wispy edges of the trees that will create the illusion of foliage and trees and things like that. But I'm also um, painting the reflection in straight away with the same color. In this instance also dry brush. I might soften those edges a little bit, but um, we, as it's closer to the view, I add a bit more blue for those trees that are poking out there at the top, just so we get a bit of variation in colors. And while this is wet, or not dry yet, it's not super wet, because it's obviously a very dry mix, I'm going to scratch out some of the tree trunks, get a bit of texture in there. And now I'm mixing a really strong dark brown from sepia and ultramarine blue, maybe a bit of yellow in there, and then I'm going to paint in my main tree. And the light is hitting it from on the left side, so I've added a bit of lavender and a bit more water, and then I'm going to paint the left side of that tree and letting that blend with my darker right side of that tree. And then I dip back into uh, my darker color. You couldn't see that I cut the video there, but I got back to my um, darker brown and then I'm just carefully drawing in those other trees. Doing the same, just flipping between lighter colors and darker colors just to get some variation in there. And again, this is where my Chinese calligraphy brush um, is coming to good use because I can paint lovely thin branches and trees with them. I'm not quite as loose and relaxed as I probably should have been here. You can see I'm holding the brush halfway down. I should have hold, held it really um, far at the back and just, just be really free with my calligraphy there. So it's something I'm still working on which makes a painting look a lot more looser is obviously um, free and loose brush strokes. And now I'm coming to the foreground. Need to add a bit more so that the trees don't um, float on top of the water using that same dark brown mix. And then create 
uneven details in the foreground. The closer we are, the more details we can see. I put in a branch coming in from the right hand side as well. And now I'm going to go back to my green mix. And you can now see how the bristles of that brush can be manipulated so that now I've got a really rough brush to work with, which is great for dry brushing leaves and grasses. Now I've picked up a really thin brush, it's a rigger, and adding some final details to the foreground, some grasses, some sticks, some stuff floating in the water. Not too much, don't want to distract or um, draw too much attention to that. And there's not a lot happening on the left side of my painting, so always good to pop in some birds. And I'm kind of just hinting at some reflections of those birds in the water as well. A few more over there. And that's it, just a couple of strokes in different directions. Make sure they're all a bit different. And then I found that uh, this water was a little bit too weak in the foreground, so I'm just wetting that with some clear water first and then gently brushing a bit more of my uh, original blue mix, which was just a bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of that gray. And then just gently put in a couple of more strokes and now to finish it off, I added a bit of white gouache and some turquoise. You can put any color in there really, but I'm just putting in a bit more texture into those trees. Added a bit of yellow to that mix as well for some um, foreground texture. A bit of splattering, a few drags of my square brush just to create a bit more interest. It's a very simple painting. To be honest, the editing of the video took me far longer than the painting itself. Um, but here we are, I've finished a little river scene. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoy that one. As usual, leave me a comment and hope to see you in the next video.